Hello. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Bean. Good Friday day. Welcome to welcome to the YouTube. Welcome to YouTube. I am the CEO of YouTube. Mr. YouTube. Bill Bezos. Um, happy Friday, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so a few days ago, um, in my Handmade Alpha Academy student campus, I asked my students what topics they would like me to cover on YouTube. There are a lot of good topics that were submitted. Um, <clears throat> however, the one that I saw the most people agreeing with and the one that I felt tied in the most to uh, the relevant air of Etsy right now was the overall mental health issues that I see among sellers. So this is going to be a good stream for you if you're new, but it's also going to be a good stream for you if you've been selling for a long time. And unfortunately, when it comes to some of the things that are taking place on Etsy, a lot of it is due to oversaturation. However, there is so much actionable advice that can be given on a topic like this. So hopefully today you can find a little bit of clarity or if not clarity, at least a, a moderate amount of understanding as to why things kind of are looking the way that they have been looking and what you should be doing. Now, obviously, if you recently took the Alpha Holiday Boot Camp, you guys are well on your way to, you know, paving something amazing for your business. But I do want to be clear that the Alpha Holiday Boot Camp, it's not a magic button. There is no magic button, right? There's nothing that's going to say, yes, if you do this, you'll make holiday sales. Anybody who says that is lying to you. OK, what the boot camp is going to do is help you to build a more consistent social media presence so that you can generate more social media followers. You can learn more about your industry, learn what's working. If your strategy isn't resulting in more followers, well, that's a good indication that you need to pivot that strategy so that you can try to find something that does work better because really business is all about pivoting. If you go back on my Facebook page, you know, the Starla and the Handmade Alphas Facebook page and scroll back, 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 back over the years, you'll see that I've changed the way that I market. I've changed our style. I've changed our branding. I've changed our colors. Um, if you've been following me for, you know, the last five years, everything used to be completely themed in like photographs of wolves. Um, and we still incorporate the wolves into our branding, but there was a lot of disconnect between crafters and, and Etsy sellers who wanted to sell online with, you know, photographs of wolves. It just, you know what I mean? There's a brand disconnect there. So I've adapted things over the year and I've refined. And it's not like I woke up one day and had this epiphany and said, oh, I need to change everything. And I made a magical switch that, you know, that helped my business for the better. It was a small process of refinement where one day I woke up and I said, oh, I'm going to play with this font instead. I'm going to switch my font to this font. Or, oh, I, I'm going to start incorporating this color into our color palette. These changes happen over the course of several years. We need to stop trying to look at things with this narrow perspective of, I want to see results tomorrow. And instead, we need to take a step back and look at the choices that are going to help the longevity of our brands, because ultimately, <clears throat> Christine and Nicole and I had a, a conversation a few weeks ago. Um, and, and by the way, if you guys are interested and you enjoyed learning from Christina during the boot camp, she's and, here. Oh yeah, there she is. Um, if you enjoyed learning from Christina during the boot camp, and you are, um, you know, or if you are familiar with her, or if you're not familiar with her, and you just really need to up your product photo game, whether that be <laughs> for, for marketing or making sure that you're actually converting some of your Etsy traffic into customers. Um, she's having a really great photography challenge. It's only open for registration until Sunday, though. So I went ahead and put a link down below for that if you're interested in checking it out. 37 bucks. I mean, that is an awesome price for the value that you get. And we already had a ton of alphas take it. Uh, when she offered it last time, who I'm sure are in the chat and can tell you how awesome it is. So check that out down below. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, she and I were talking <laughs> and she said something that I really loved. And Christina, I, I can't remember exactly how you worded it, but she said that in business, there's going to be people who are focused on making money. And then there's going to be people who are focused on building a business. If you're only focused on making money, you're probably not going to make any money. And and I know that that sucks. Um, and, and I especially see it in the POD community. 
It makes you unintentionally short-sighted on how to run a business in a proper way for longevity. Yeah. Um, that's, that's how I would word that. Right, right. If if you are if your only goal for owning a business is to make money, you're probably not going to make any money. And that really sucks to hear. But it's important to see why successful businesses make money and what it is about them that actually makes them successful and makes people want to follow them. Yeah, there's always going to be a couple sleazy businesses out there that make a bunch of money. Um, you know, be- nature of business. However, businesses like that, that their only objective is making money, they don't last very long. You know what I mean? They, they're they not the type of brands that I would consider a part of our culture. We look at brands that have, you know, a focus and a, perf- a, a purpose. And these are the brands that are top of mind to us. These are the brands that dominate industries. And yeah, we're small sellers. But just because you're a small seller, it doesn't mean that the tried and true rules of business don't apply to you. They still apply, just on a scale that is a little bit more human. Because ultimately, if you're selling on a platform like Etsy, there is a bit of, um, you know, human nature that those buyers are trying to gravitate towards. And I, I can tell you right now, Etsy has changed so much that I'm finding it very difficult as a consumer because of all the people who are there for the wrong reasons. Mark had been, he finally found one, but it took us months of searching to even find a single shop on Etsy that sells handmade engagement rings because he wanted to um, update my engagement ring for our anniversary. Some of them had 50, 60, 70,000 sales. Yeah. Yeah. And a quick reverse image search, and you'll see that none of them were handmade. Um, and a lot of Reddit posts calling them out. Yeah, Reddit's yeah. Reddit's a good place for that, too. I, I call I mean, I called one, the one that I had been following for years. They've even got pictures in their about section of them making jewelry. or yep. and, I have the, and I have the exact Alibaba shop that they buy okay. their rings from. Um, oh, I know. But, yeah. So, it's, it's very frustrating when you're <laughs> shopping as a customer and not being able to find why you came to Etsy in the first place. And what I really don't want to see is, you know, I don't want, I don't want to contribute to that and, and be one of those coaches that says, you know, Oh, anybody can be successful because that's not true. It's not. It takes a very special and very persistent kind of person to be successful, but it's not that hard to be that. You just have to care about what you do, the people you serve, and the niche that you want to cater to. Because if you remain persistent and you dedicate your life to learning about what it is that you're doing, and not not just what you're doing, but the type of person you want to sell to, eventually you will see that momentum. But it does take effort. So all of these, I'm so sick of these YouTubers that, that preach, you know, oh, list a thousand products, list, you know, you, oh, you got to do a listing a day. How much do you, how much passion do you have for what you're listing if you're listing something every day? How much time and love went into that product if you're listing one of those every day? If I go into your shop and you have a thousand listings, how am I supposed to, you know, assume that you put time and care into what you're creating. And this does go for POD sellers as well. I am a POD seller, but I care about every single product that I produce and I put time into it and I order the samples of it and I make sure that it follows what is popular in my industry. And we seek licensing from authors that are popular to ensure that we're doing it legally. And I guess what I'm trying to say is making sure that you're serving a purpose in the community that you want to sell within is the most important thing right now. So one thing that I wanted to bring up today was, um, I, I thank you to Tina. Are you here, Tina? Yes, she is. Okay. Tina shared an amazing <clears throat> post by Jay from Jay's Way. I'm sure that you guys have probably seen him on YouTube. He's a really awesome um, POD coach He's been in the community for a long time. He spoke at Amplified. Um, Really good guy. He made a great video on the Keep Etsy Human movement that we did. Let me see if I can find it. It's fallen down the the search page a little bit. While I'm looking for it, did we have any... um, Lots of comments. Was there any questions? Oh, of course. I should have saved it before I got on here. No. 
Okay. Let me see if I can find and it. And now you being a new seller does not make you part of the pain. That's not no, necessarily. not at all. That's not necessarily it. That's not what we're trying to get at here. No, new. it's not <clears throat> new sellers. We're not saying don't sell on Etsy. We're saying make sure that you understand why you're selling on Etsy. That's First. what's... This person had said, I just received a notice from Printify regarding significant price increases in products and shipping. However, I've not heard or seen anyone commenting or covering this. You've got to talk to Printify directly. Um, yeah, I've not seen anything specific on it. Yet. I, I have. I've I've seen I've seen it happening, but um, we're not there yet. <laughs> How do you reverse image search? You can use you can use Google. Right click Im images.google.com and you can either drag an image into it or you can search for an image. There's a there's a thing on the page. There's YouTube tutorials on how to do it. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna read this post from Jay that he posted in the Etsy print on demand group. Um because, you know, there have been so many people, and, and this is this applies to everybody, not just POD. <clears throat> but there are so many people who think that, you know, just because Q4 is, you know, when most people see success, that that means that they are also going to be successful. We're going to have plenty of sellers come, you know, November, Cyber Week, December, who don't see success. And it doesn't mean that the platform's not successful. We'll just see individuals who are not successful. And, it, you know, selling during that time does not mean that you deserve sales. So I'm going to read this post from him um, because I thought that it was really insightful. He said, stop. Stop trying to upload for the sake of uploading. Just listing for the sake of numbers will inevitably lead to burnout. This may not apply to you specifically, but it does apply to most. So I'll go ahead and say what needs to be said by way of some tough love here. Myth number one, you need to hit 100 or 300 or 1,000 listings to make sales. Truth. 100 of the right listings can very easily outsell shops with thousands of sales. And I dare say that a shop with one amazing listing can outrank a shop with thousands of listings. Because I have several specialty shops that only make one amazing thing and they have thousands of sales for it. Mm. Your bookends, that's right. all they sell. Um, the right listing can make sales within a few days and sometimes even hours. Myth two, you will automatically get sales in Q4. Truth, if you're making daily sales prior to Q4, then it stands to reason that your sales should increase. If you're not making regular sales prior to Q4, though, it means people don't like some or all of what you're offering, which, you know, that might not be the case for everybody. It could just be that you haven't found the right keyword, you haven't found the right audience, maybe you're brand new. But if you've been around a while and you know that your keywords are good, you're just not converting you know, I mean, there's a lot of factors. It could be your pricing. You could just have really crappy images of your products. You could just not be selling them in the best way. Or it could mean that, you know, people don't want what you're selling. Um, he said, so why would a certain date fix that? The fix, spend the next four to five days researching your best selling niche, not designing and uploading, just researching trends, color palettes, Facebook groups for that niche, uh, or any virtual hangout, etc. Become an expert or at least learn enough to talk about the niche in a group setting and explain to someone who doesn't know anything about it. Make notes along the way. Only then will you know enough about it to come up with funny sayings, inside jokes, unique designs, or unique ideas for old designs that your target audience uh, will actually want. Then, next week, put up three to four new designs based on your research. Do more if you're inspired or change directions and repeat the steps again. This is work that will move the needle, pay off, versus just being busy or doing more of the same that is not working, only to feel overwhelmed and burnt out as you do now. Don't be afraid to look at other shops that are making sales in the same niche. They're doing something right, right? So try to dissect a few of their listings to identify patterns and try to apply what's working to your own design ideas. Um, so the short answer, and, and the thing that Printify often you know, has me come on their channel to talk about the thing that is true for any industry, no matter what you sell, because I sold jewelry before I was in POD and I had a six figure top 1% shop. The thing that remains consistent and always has is that you need to have a niche. You need to have a focus and there needs to be an audience out there that wants that thing. Guess what? Gifts for mom ain't a niche. That ain't a niche. I know that that what type of mom are we talking about? 
Is it, is it, you know, gifts for mom, like gifts that are going to help her at when she has an infant? Are they gifts that say mom on them? Are they a gift that makes her, you know, feel proud to be a mom? You have to define this niche. You have to really refine who and why and why your product is actually filling a need in their life. And I know that this is hard. If it was easy, everyone would do it. I have an entire massive program, the Handmade Alpha Academy, that literally teach a found, teaches a foundational knowledge of human psychology and neuromarketing so that you're able to appeal to people on this deep level. And I'm sure that any HAA student in here can, can agree that it's not just you know an Etsy course. It's a psychology program. With that in mind, we have to start separating ourselves away from what this industry is becoming, primarily due to a lot of YouTubers who are teaching a lot of content that, you know, it's catchy, it's grabby, it, it has a cool, snazzy subject line. They sounds can, great. It sounds great. It sounds like a good idea. It sounds like it <clears throat> could work. But if you've got one Etsy coach who says, oh, you know, this worked for me. I've made a million dollars on Etsy by uploading a listing a day. Okay, they've already seen success doing that, right? They were at the top. Maybe they were one of the first to do that strategy. So they've got listings with high listing quality scores. But then the thousands of people who watch, it branches it out even more. And if each of those sellers also start listing a product a day, look at how saturated that market just became. And now we see so many people who are like, I can't find any good keywords. I can't find keywords that have high searches and low competition. Well, of course not. Of, co of course not. This is why finding a niche is so important. We have to dive into a niche that, you know, that is a little bit more specific than these general topics that are, that these, um, you know, shops that want to create thousands and thousands of lift things a month. We have to get ourselves narrowed down into more concentrated focus where we can try to find things that aren't what I would consider easy targets. Gifts for mom, yeah, that's that's easy to come up with. However, it's a highly saturated niche. I think that um, Pam and I were just doing research yesterday because we've been seeing capybaras everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we were looking on E-Rank and the searches aren't really high yet. But I guarantee in the next few months, capybaras are going to be the thing. People that, are learning about them. Yeah, that's going to be the thing that shoots, dog you know. Dog rats, dog rats, dog rats. <laughs> um, but what I'm afraid of over the next, you know, few months and, and, and even years, but we'll start with the holiday season, is we're going to see all these sellers who were made big promises by other coaches you know, that the holiday season is going to have some magical effect where their crappy products that they didn't put any time or love into are suddenly going to become interesting to people. And that's not how it works. If you've designed a product and you're like, meh, that looks good enough, and you've slapped it on a t-shirt, a customer isn't going to look at that product and think, wow, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. They're going to say, meh, that looks, that's okay. They're going to look for the thing that, you know, that the creator was proud to make and put tons of time and love into. And when Jay talked about, you know, finding those niches and getting yourself in, involved in their communities and learning about the the little funny phrases and the lingo and the cool things that, you know, that that are taking place, the more specific um topics of interest within these niches. I mean, everybody's going to be grabbing the easy targets that lay right on the surface. So for example, in our industry, we have a, a bookish shop and we license with authors to make their merch for their books. And one of the big books right now that, you know, everybody loves is A Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, Mark and I have read the full series. I am obsessed with the series. If you go to Etsy and you look for products, there is one specific quote. If anybody's read the series, you know exactly what quote it is. There's one specific quote that is on 
everything when you're looking for these products on Etsy. This, this, it, I mean, it's a huge series and there's one quote that everybody puts on everything. And it's not even that impressive of a quote. Like it wasn't like a pivotal moment in the story, in my opinion, but that's the quote that everybody puts on everything. And even Hot Topic is now making merch with this quote on it. So what Michelle and I decided to do as we were building our new shop is we said, Let's find the quotes that nobody is, is making merch for. Let's find the quotes that mean something to us as we've read these books. Let's go through while we're rereading and, you know, make note of any quote that we find to be inspiring or meaningful or, you know, these aren't the quotes that you can look up on Goodreads. These are the quotes that you actually have to do your homework to find. And we're developing products with these quotes on them because we are involved in the community that we're selling within. <laughs> What are the things in your own communities that you want to sell within or the niches that you want to sell to that, what are those things that are important to them? What are the things that aren't already on every single product in the marketplace? You know, I, I am so sick of Mama Bear t-shirts. I am so sick of, you know, Live, Laugh, Love wall decals. Like there are so many interesting and unique and different products, but everybody is aiming for the easy targets. You know what I mean? I, I mean, honestly, again, it comes back to that TikTok and Instagram hustle culture thing. Everybody sees like, oh, here's this influencer I follow. They made $15,000. They didn't. They made $15,000 this month selling their things because they're famous on a platform where they can advertise their things. It's <laughs> this, the selling the same live, laugh, love crap that everybody else is doing. It's unless you're an influencer somewhere else, you're not going to be successful doing that. It's just, it, you're just not. Right. <clears throat> so here's, here's, here's the raw truth. If you already aren't making very many sales, you're not going to have a million dollar holiday season. And that really, really sucks. However, that doesn't mean that you should go and hide. Mm -mm. It doesn't mean that you should go close yourself in your bedroom. You definitely shouldn't give up. Right. It doesn't mean that you should give up. It doesn't mean <clears throat> that you should make a blanket cocoon and, and cry with Ben and Jerry's. It means... So that sounds very nice. It does. <laughs> sounds very nice. It means that right now, and, and something that we taught in the holiday boot camp, every, you all get like a little freebie right now if you didn't, you know, attend it. Right now, people are more susceptible to marketing than any other time of year. The reason for that is because shopping is top of mind. I don't know about you guys, but for me around the holidays, I love getting cool ads. Like if I if I see an ad for a type of product that I'm, you know, moderately interested in, I will click that ad just so I can see more products like that. So, you know, my Facebook will personalize my experience. And I'm not just talking about paid ads right now. I'm talking about posting on Instagram. I'm talking about posting reels. I'm talking about posting TikTok videos of your products. I'm talking about getting yourself out there. I'm talking about, you know, really buckling down on that social media reach. And if you didn't take the holiday boot camp, hey, that's A-OK. -okay. I got a 30-day Instagram challenge kit down below and it's free. You can sign up for that right now and start doing that work. When we make sure that we're aligning things like our social media with the times when people are more susceptible to marketing where they're actually considering marketing, thinking, oh, you know, my mom might like this for Christmas or I'm going to follow this page to see if maybe they run a Black Friday sale. We're gaining an opportunity because if they're more susceptible to marketing right now, that means that maybe on Instagram, they're more likely to follow us. And maybe that individual doesn't make a purchase for Christmas, right? But on average, it takes seven brand interactions or, or seven, you know, pieces of content for somebody to feel compelled to make a purchase from that brand. Maybe over the course of the next few months, they see seven unique pieces of content from you that they, they really like. They really like, you know, this necklace that you've listed or the, these earrings. Oh, I'm watching your Instagram stories and I see how you make those. That's really cool. Oh, you've posted a reel showing me all of your products. That's really cool. And then maybe February rolls around. Oh, you know, it's Valentine's Day. I want to get my best friend some cool earrings. I know. 
There's that shop that I followed a few weeks ago. What was what was that shop's name? Oh, there, there's their post in my feed. Yes, that's the shop. And they go and they make that purchase. This is strategic marketing. It's marketing where you're not focused on making all of your money right this very second. It's marketing where, yes, making money this very second's great. If we can do that, awesome. But if we're already not successful, it's time for that slow grind where we're producing social media content and we're, you know, we're researching our niche and we're analyzing our results. So looking at our social media posting, seeing what type of posts are doing well, maybe for your audience, they really like carousels. Okay, cool. Carousels. I I can see that carousels are doing great. I'm going to make more carousels. Well, maybe I'll play around with them and I'll do carousels in in a different style this time or I'll add in, you know, maybe I'll do a different type of product for my carousels. Or maybe I'll do a carousel where it's mostly text that they have to read. And you analyze if how those are doing. And as, you know, the days go on, you refine and you change things and you experiment and you test this thing and you test this strategy until eventually you have a good idea of what it is that your audience likes. And this takes time. It's why we see so few people doing it. It's why we see so few people who are, you know, successful through their external marketing. But the unfortunate thing is, is as important as SEO is, and, you know, I'm a manager at E-Rank, Mark's a manager at E-Rank. As important as SEO (laughs) is, social media right now is very important. Because you know who's not sitting on social media making sure that they are, you know, they're carving out their niche and building positive associations and connecting with their audience? The crappy drop shippers, the the people selling all the the cheap junky engagement rings when Mark and I were shopping for engagement rings. And like several people said on here, people that just get on Creative Fabrica, download a bunch of designs and then just stick right. them on t-shirts expecting to make a bunch of money. Exactly. The people who who don't know anything about their industry, they're just after the quick buck. They're not putting work into their social media presence. They Sure, SEO, maybe they go and they hire somebody to do their SEO for them. They can compete in that. That, you know, once you learn SEO, you're, it's kind of a, a strategy that, I mean, yes, you have to tweak your SEO, but if you know how to do it, then, then you know how to do it. Social media is something where it's a human oriented thing. You know, there, yes, there is an algorithmic element to it, but it's mostly the human element of social media that makes it so challenging because you have to appeal to humans as opposed to SEO where it's easy enough to appeal to a computer. You know what I mean? They're not willing to put in that work on social media and building brand connections and starting authentic conversations with their audience and engaging back when their audience comments on their posts and, you know, posting things that their audience are interested in. Like today, I just, in our stories over on um, our Books and Cold Brews page, I wasn't selling anything. I just posted a picture of a book series that I like and said, I can't recommend this series enough. Like, because people who are following me are readers, because I sell products for readers, and what are they going to enjoy from me is knowing the type of books that I also like, because maybe they think, wow, you know, she likes all the books that we like. Maybe this is a good series that I should read. Because I understand my industry and I know what is interesting to them. So it doesn't matter what you sell. There's always going to be a way to connect with that audience. To build a genuine uh, connection to them. Uh, Dr. Squatch is a fantastic example of a brand that you really like. Who knows their target audience. They do Star Wars collabs. Everything they do is kind of funny. They do. Their branding is like a Sasquatch. They do soap, um, deodorant. Uh, what else do they do? Do they do? Sh- it's primarily soap and deodorant. Soap and deodorant. Mm-hmm. And they've like nailed their branding. You know, they have like the outdoorsy smells. Their logo is like a Sasquatch, you know, because they make products for men. Um, they have all their woodsy scents. But then they do these cool collabs where they did like a whole, like your the space themed one that they mm-hmm. did with like Black Hole. What yeah. They just Mars. did. Mars. Yeah. And then they just did um, one called Chalky Milk. Oh, yeah. I got three bars of Chalky Milk. Yeah, because, you know, <laughs> one of the one of the memes and you can see it even with the um, with the baby Yoda Grogu. You always see the memes where he wants his Chalky Milk. 
they did a chalky milk soap because they know their audience. They know like, oh, you know, they kind of appeal to silly, um, yeah, silly dudes. And and brands are starting to really kind of open up in that kind of way. I was actually going to tell you Nesquik had a really good one yesterday that I got on Facebook, oddly enough. Um, it it had Nesquik on the top and they were like pouring chocolate milk and it said this ad is not uh, NSFW. And then it kept on playing and then it like rolled over to the next scene and it just said Nesquik safe for work. That's and so I was funny. like, I was like, come on. I was hoping for the NSFW here. Come on. That's like um, Pedialyte. Mm-hmm. They they kind of <laughs> they appeal to people who drink a lot, <laughs> right? Pedialyte. We think of Pedialyte for babies, <clears throat> but recently they created um, a new Pedialyte specifically for like when you have a hangover and you drink Pedialyte. And mm-hmm. they they've done a bunch of ads about like we know why why you're actually buying Pedialyte, like, <laughs> and it's just so ingenious that they know their target audience so well. Um, and obviously these big brands, they have a lot more customers where they can actually observe like why people are making their purchases. But when you don't have a big audience like that, you can start to look at what other similar brands are doing that are successful. And I'm not talking about those people who list a thousand items a day. I'm talking about big brands. You know, if you make home decor, for example, maybe you make like wall prints or something, Go study Pottery Barn. Like Pottery Barn is one of the big brands that knows their target audience and they make sure that all of their pieces fit a very specific style. I, I It's like upper class, you know, really expensive, super nice, very well thought out home decor. And, and they know their audience so well. Everything that they release follows this really, really nice, clean aesthetic. Um, the, the Dr. Squatch brand, if you make soap, for example, and you're like, oh, who's my target audience? Everybody buys soap. Well, yeah. Dirty people. (laughs) Dirty people. Dr. Squatch, they could just make soap for everybody, but no, they're like, you know who we want to target? We want to target kind of funny, like millennial dads. What are like funny millennial dads into? We'll do, we'll make our logo a big hairy Sasquatch. That's, you know what I mean? Like millennial dudes, they all got beards now. Big hairy Sasquatch and we'll make our scents, you know, space themed and chocolate milk and all woodsy. And they had another one. I'm trying to think of some of their other collections and I, I, don't can't, I can't think of anything right now, but that's okay. It all makes sense together. It doesn't matter what you sell. You've got an audience out there, but you got to dive into it. So <clears throat> I guess what I'm trying to to really like to kind of sum everything up is that when you're building a business, you don't want to put the cart before the, before the horse. Um, and that's unfortunately what most of us do. We're like, I like this thing and I like designing this or I can make this or I know how to make this. So I'm going to start selling it. And that's a money making strategy. But when you're already ju- jumping into a marketplace where everybody has those skills, you know, everybody is out to make money. What is your unique value proposition that you're actually making? What is your selling point that makes you more unique than everybody else who's doing that thing, aside from offering like the cheapest possible prices and not making any money anyway. What is it that actually makes you stand out, makes you unique, makes you worth uh, remembering, makes you worth buying from to begin with? And a lot of people take it really personally, especially around the holidays when they see other sellers doing so well. And they're like, well, I put in all the hours. I put in all the work. I made so many designs. I did all the SEO. I I I, I bought a bunch of, you know, mock-ups from places. I I don't understand why am I not making sales? Just because you've done all that surface level stuff that makes your brand look kind of similar to these brands that are doing well, it doesn't mean that you know anything about the target audience that you're trying to appeal to. It doesn't mean that you have a defined niche. It doesn't mean that you've built an audience of customers who are interested in your products. It doesn't mean that you've built any type of community. Um, It just means that you've got the necessary skills to list things on Etsy, which welcome to the club. There's over 5 million of you. You've got to find that thing that makes you unique. And 
for a lot of us, you know, when you're selling a product that essentially other people do make, you have to find a way to connect in in a way that your competitors aren't. And, you know, for Books and Cold Brews, the shop that we're running, yeah, there's plenty of other sellers who go get licensing and make bookish products. And we're also competing against the buttheads who don't get licensed. And they Which do. is most of them. Right, who who <clears throat> aren't officially licensed and who are selling the stuff illegally. Um, but what we're doing is creating designs that are unique, using quotes that not everybody else is using, and trying to build a relationship with the people who are are following us on social media while simultaneously trying to grow that audience. So as we near the holidays, keep this truth in mind. Hours do not equate to how much success you deserve. That's not how it works. This isn't a day job, right? You don't work more hours and make more money. It's not how it works. This isn't, it's not like working overtime at your job. What matters is strategy and how well you've been able to connect to actual human beings that exist. Again, there's no magical algorithm that assigns sales to you just because they see how my, oh, Etsy sees how much work you've been doing. Well, you, you, you make sales today because you've put in a lot of work. Not how it works. A real human being with real needs has to look at your product next to all of the other similar products that pop up on a search page, click on that listing, and decide as they're looking at things like your pricing, looking at things like your product description, clicking through your 10 photos, they have to say to themselves, I like this thing enough that I'm going to spend my hard-earned money on it, right? So during the holidays, we're going to see plenty of people in the Facebook groups and in the Etsy communities, you know, talking about how, um, you know, it was, oh, I didn't make any sales. You know, everybody said I was going to make sales, but I didn't make any. Boo-hoo, I'm so sad. It's okay to be upset if you don't make any sales. But what can you learn from it? If you don't make any sales, what information can you pull from that? Well. Perspective, for one. Right, perspective. Maybe, maybe it's not my product. Maybe it's my strategy. Maybe my photos are bad. Maybe if I'm using mock-ups, maybe I'm not using mock-ups that appeal to my target audience. Or maybe I'm just, you know, using the crappy mock-ups provided to me by my print provider that everybody's using. Maybe I need to buy samples and take my own product photos. Or maybe you create a handmade product. Well, maybe my lighting's not on point. Maybe my photos are too dark. Maybe I've got too many props in the background. Maybe my customers are confused about what my product is. Um, maybe my pricing is too high or too low, which is, you know, if I see a product and the pricing is super low, I'm very suspicious. Key indicator when we were shopping for engagement rings of whether or not, you know, a product was actually what it said it was. Yeah. Ain't nobody selling a real diamond engagement ring for 200 bucks. Sorry. No. Like, it, it, That's 20, 22 carat gold with... Yeah, no. <laughs> no. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. And if it is, then, you know... I don't know how your business is functioning. I just, I get so stressed out this time of year. <clears throat> my my mental health right now is bad, and it's my and it's my fault. Fully accountable. Um, I I had the Printify Amplified thing to do, and then I immediately had to like do the boot camp. And, um, you know, I just, I, I had too many things. I, I took on too many projects all at once and I waited too long to start building the boot camp. And because of that, you know, I got like overloaded with work to the point where my brain just, yeah. so she's being forced into a three month ish vacation. Yeah. I'm still posting videos, still doing the Friday beans, still doing support for my, you know, for HAA students. Um, you know, basically nothing that you guys see has changed. I'm just not starting any extra projects. Yeah, no new projects till the beginning of the year. I made a promise to my daughter. I said, by the time you get off the bus at 2.30 every day, I will be done working other than E-Rank Q&A day when, you know, because E-Rank Q&A runs till four. I said, I will be done working, <clears throat> I promise you, um, because I need the mental health break. I'm, But around this time of year, I also get really depressed because... I see the sellers who are doing well, and I love you guys. Um, there are some HAA students who are already kicking, like, major butt. 
like they've seen like some of the best sales that they ever have. And, and it's awesome. Oh my God. I am so proud of you guys. Um, I, I truly am. Some of you guys have just been, I mean, working for years, like literally years putting in, I've got something in my eye. I'm sorry. <laughs> putting in the time and the effort and the hours. Um, and you know, you can tell. And then there's some of you guys who are putting in the time and the effort and the hours and you're not seeing the results. And really, it's the social media element that I think at this point, when you're in those more saturated niches, it's the thing that kind of sets you apart. And then, you know, we have to deal with, you know, well, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be on camera. Well, that's a challenge we all have to face together. You know, well, I don't want to, you know, post on TikTok. I'm afraid, you know, China's going to steal my data. That's a challenge <laughs> that we have to face. Sorry. Um, there's... There are so many unique perspectives depending on what you sell and what your personal capabilities are that it is impossible for me as a as a singular human being to be able to analyze exactly what your issue is. Um, but my biggest, like, my blanket advice for everybody that applies to you no matter who you are and what you sell and what your challenge is, is that persistence is always going to win out. Uh, as Einstein said, though, and I'm probably going to say this quote completely wrong, but I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit. Repeating, what is it? Repeating an action and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. Mm -hmm. So if you are on social media and you, you know, you're just posting like pictures of mock-ups or pictures of your products and, you know, buy it here, buy it here, buy it here. And you're not actually offering any unique perspectives. Well, um, yeah, it stands to reason that if that's not working for you and you keep doing it, then it's still not going to work for you. You've got to really spend time analyzing what you're doing and deciding like, okay, this, I've been doing this for like three months, not seeing a lot of waves. Maybe I need to change things up a little bit. Um, so during the holidays, what I want you guys to do is spend a little bit of time doing research, not just into your niche. I mean, definitely research your niche, but do a little bit of research on your phone, hop on Instagram, start diving in to some of the brands that are doing well. And, and the cool thing is a lot of the time, if you go to your explore tab, which is just the little uh, magnifying glass, as long as you've been <clears throat> topically consistent on Instagram, you know, with, with your industry, a lot of times you'll hit that explore tab and you'll get tons of posts related to your industry anyway. Same with if you go into reels and you start scrolling through reels, a lot of the times, most of them will be catered to what Instagram thinks you're interested in. But if not, find a hashtag related to like Etsy, like do hashtag Etsy sellers and just start, you know, exploring and finding some of those profiles that have lots and lots of followers and engagement. Um, thankfully, Instagram now, when you search for a hashtag, they will put um, some of the best performing content first. They It's not chronological. It is based on, you know, what they think you're going to actually be interested in. So, and, and they usually push content that's already, you know, doing relatively well. So it can kind of help you to find people who are doing well. But start taking notes. There's a cool little save feature on Instagram. It looks like a little bookmark. Um, this is something that I personally do a lot. I will sit and scroll through people in my industry. And if I see something really cool and I'm like, wow, you know, I've never thought to make a marketing video like this. I will hit that little save button because God knows my brain is too full to remember all these cool like Instagram real ideas and transition ideas and like cool ways that people have done their photos. I'll just, I make a little folder in Instagram. You can make your little saved folders. Nobody sees it. It's, it's all just for you. And I'll just save a bunch of, you know, cool ideas to analyze when I've got more time. And then when it comes time to market, I'm like, man, I, I can't think of anything good for marketing. Oh, wait, I've got this whole folder of cool ideas. And during the holidays when everybody's marketing and everybody's on their A game and everybody is posting the best of the best of the best of their type of content, this is a great time to learn. It's a great time to start analyzing, you know, what these sellers are doing. So, um, yeah, 
I hope that this is helpful. Um, it, I understand it, it can be hard, especially when you hit that point of burnout. And my biggest suggestion for those who are at that point of burnout, whether it be, you know, because you, you've, you're making too many sales and you're tired because <laughs> we've got plenty of been people. there. Yep. Amber and I were just, you know, we, <clears throat> we had talked about that today. Um, or maybe you are to the point you know, you just haven't made any sales and you're really, really stressed and you know that like I have no defined niche, like I have no strategy, like I'm not, I, I'm I'm learning right now and I'm learning my mistakes and I, I need to improve them. Rather than assuming that like you have to make sales for Christmas this year, keep in mind the holidays come back every year. There's always next year. You know, you have not failed Etsy if you don't make sales this holiday season. Instead, do yourself a favor and take a deep breath. Understand that business is a journey that you're going to be on for a very long time. There's no pivotal moment like in, in business. It's typically teeny tiny little things that you learn day by day that make up a big difference. It's not like, oh, you know, you learn this one groundbreaking thing and it changes everything. And then rather than, you know, trying to you know, get all these little kittens into the basket as they're all also running and you're, you know, losing sight of things and things are slipping away from you and you're stressing out and you're freaking out. And oh my God, Christmas is only in a few weeks and I'm never going to be able to make it and I'm not making any sales. Rather than trying to do that, instead, let those little kittens crawl out of that basket and hang out with those kittens, you know, rather than trying to freak out and fix everything right now, last minute, instead, Spend time doing your research so that you can plan for January. Spend time saving good ideas. Spend time doing some research. Spend time analyzing everybody's A-game. If you know that you're not on your A-game, look at the people who are. Write that stuff down. And then as we're progressing through the year, you've got all these amazing ideas that you just have to implement in. Not all at once, not all together, little bit by bit by bit by bit until maybe next year <clears throat> you have created something that you can be proud of and you have an, a decent sized social media audience who is you know interested in what you're selling there I, I I know you guys get sick of me saying it but money's like a cat if you try to chase a cat around that cat is gonna run from you you can't chase a cat cats will run. But if you sit down and you're calm and you're doing your own thing, that cat is going to come up to you and, you know, want to be close to you, right? Money is a natural result of you having a calm and passionate energy. If you are sitting doing your own thing, making products that you enjoy making, doing your research into your industry, working with people that you like to work with, learning about people that you like to work with, and developing a brand that you can be proud of, guess what? That's when money starts to enter your life because these customers start to see products that, oh, this aligns with what I like. Oh, they're social media marketing. You know, this, this is exactly the type of brand that I like. You know, this is this is made for me. This was designed with someone like me in mind. And we've all got brands like that, right? We've all got a brand that we follow and we're, we love everything that they sell and we have to almost not look at what they're selling because we know that we're going to spend money if we do. We need to stop putting money as the focus and remember that money is a natural result of us having focus on something that is meaningful. Uh, on something that has a purpose, not just in our lives, but in the lives of those who we're trying to serve. Money isn't, or making money in business isn't about you. It's how well you've served someone else. And, and you know, I all, I see it all the time around the holidays too with some of the more like, you know, some of the handmade businesses that I follow, which I love all the handmade businesses I follow, but a lot of them will be like, I need to make three sales by tonight to pay my bills. Like, I've come come to my shop. Can anybody help me out? Can anybody? Please don't do that. Like, that is you asking your customer to solve your problems 
rather than being there to solve a problem that your customer has. And that might work once, but it ain't going to work for very long. And I've got a couple brands that I followed where they're, you know, their owners, that's that's the only way that they make their money is they just constantly post and like at first. Begging. Right. And at first, you know, it kind of worked like, oh, you, you poor soul falling on hard times. Let me help you. After a while, it stops working. And and, and this is another thing that people really don't like to hear, but it's true. You should never start a business because you don't have money. And I know that sounds completely backwards, but it's the truth. You should not start a business out of desperation. You should not start a business because you have a bill due. Um, because it takes time and it takes money to make money and it takes a lot of work and it's not going to be overnight. And nine times out of 10, it doesn't succeed. And COVID businesses are a, an anomaly. That's a whole different thing. Yes. Etsy came into the rescue for a lot of people who needed to make money, who literally were just like forced into unemployment. So let's leave that completely out of the discussion. But what happened <clears throat> when people were allowed to go back to in-person shopping online traffic, all e-commerce, Amazon included, it decreased. And then you had all these sellers who were like, my masks aren't selling anymore. I'm like, well, yeah, your masks aren't selling anymore, Janice. I'm sorry. Like, there's nothing I can do, though. I can't make masks popular again. You got to find something else to sew. <laughs> like, I, I wish I could help you and I wish I could make your masks more popular for you again. But everybody's already got their masks. They mm -hmm. went and they bought them when they needed them. And now they don't now they don't need them. You need to make some handbags. You need to you need to find something else cool that you can sew. Make some doll clothes. Uh, you know, there's so many things that you can make. Or alternatively, if you're not passionate about running a business and that's what you started doing and you don't want to move on to something else, stop. Just stop. Yeah. I mean, I, I hate to say that, but clearly you were just in this to make money for a couple of minutes to get through the pandemic. Now you're not passionate about anything else. You're not willing to change. So just stop selling. I mean, really? Yeah. I mean, if you hate it, if you if you, if you, <laughs> if hate, you hate it so much, go. Right. I, and I'll give you the same advice. If <laughs> I'll you're shake your hand on the way out. Good job on the few sales you made. Right. If you, I'm, I'll say the same thing. If you hate your career, like, sweetheart, go Quit. Go find, go find, you know, go find something else to do. Like, obviously, don't quit that job till you have something else lined up. But if, yeah. you, if you hate your boss, I mean, find another opportunity. I mean, my goodness. But yeah, it's, I don't know. There's, there's an entire, there's an entire universe on Etsy of people, you know, they, they, they exist with this thought that, that, that it's almost like they've forgotten that this entire element, the most important element of making sales is the, that there needs to be a living, breathing human being with an entire life and children and a family and, you know, obligations and a job that they that they're working at. You know, they have this whole life. And while they're shopping, they have to form a connection with you and choose you. And it's an honor when they do. Like, have it's you flattering? And we tend to lose sight of that when when if you're a seller who's made a lot of sales when you make that first sale, it's magical. It's like, wow, they trusted me. You know, they liked me. And you feel really good about it. But then you hit like 4,000 sales and you're like, God, I got to pack this <clears> order. <throat> like, it's easy to forget. Sometimes we need to remember. Like, it is absolutely magical that someone chose you. But if you're not making sales, you need to make yourself worth choosing. <laughs> you need to make yourself, you know a brand that a real human being is going to connect with and want to buy from. And Etsy, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, if, if I don't want to form a connection with a brand, I go to Amazon. I don't give a crap who I'm buying from on Amazon. I don't look at the name of the seller. I don't, I don't, I've seldom even look at the reviews of anything else they sell or anything about them. I look at the reviews for that item and I stick it in my cart on Etsy. I will look at an item. I'll go to that shop. I'll browse through a couple different products. I'll read through their overall reviews. You know, I want to get a feel for who they are. I'll see how many sales they have. How long have they been selling? Oh, wow. You know, I'll look at their about section and I'll try to learn about them. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to answer some questions. I think that this was a good opportunity for us to kind of like let loose. Me, at least. You were quiet. 
I just like you've been talking for an hour. I figured I just let you needed to get it out. I needed to get it out, <clears throat> man, because I'll tell you, I love working with Printify. I'm also a POD seller. Um, but what I feel like I'm doing right now is I'm having to unwire a lot of the bad advice that these get rich quick coaches are trying to put in these sellers' heads. And even Printify is asking me to help do that. Like they're having me come yeah. talking about niches. Now, somebody had somebody had talked about the Printify summit thing and how some of the YouTubers there were people who do preach some of the bad mm -hmm. advice. And we didn't know that <laughs> ahead of time. I really wish we could have. We were supposed to be there in person. in person. I really wish you could have been in there in person to like kind of put that situation in its place when it was there. Well, you know, I don't know any of the other coaches other than Jay. Um, so regardless, I I don't care what they say. Um, and I don't even care if they've got thousands and thousands of sales in POD. Like, nope, I don't either. take, listen to my perspective, listen to their perspective. Test the strategies for yourself, do your own research, and decide who you should listen to. Because I'm not going to tell you that I am the person who is right. You can only listen to me. Only I have good ideas. Because that's not true. Unless it's something that is an, an you know, undisputable fact. Like, I know a lot of them will give, like, terrible SEO advice. Um, not the people at the summit, but just in general, YouTubers. You need to be able to form your own opinions and not just take every little piece of advice, you know, that that YouTubers tell you. I don't care how many sales they have. Um, I've been on this marketplace for a really long time and I worked out with work with thousands of sellers. I had a successful handmade business. I didn't close it because I wasn't making sales. I closed it because I was making too many sales. And I also worked at E-Rank and I needed something that was easier. And I had a bunch of supplier issues. It's like the stars aligned in a way that made me say, like, it would be a good time for me to step away from this and do something new. Because I respect myself. I respect my time. And I respect you guys. I know that I can't serve you if all my hours are spent upstairs in an office making jewelry that I fell out of love with. Um, but, you know, looking at a, a seller that has thousands and thousands of sales it doesn't mean that if you do exactly what they say, you're going to be just as ex successful as them. And chances are they probably, you probably won't. I mean, your chances are more likely that you won't succeed doing what they did than you will. Right. I mean, so, it really is. We had tons of people that pop, even with just with hers that popped up and did the exact same thing. And or like early YouTube days for us, there were people that went and did pretty much exactly what she did in the same way that she did. And most of them aren't on Etsy anymore. Right. They, so, just, they disappeared because it wasn't their ideas and they weren't creative and they didn't know the market and they didn't know the audience. And, you know, they were just trying to copy what I did. Do your so, thing. Exactly. Uh, yeah. A lot of people talking about uh, another YouTuber. Uh-huh. Just stop listening to that YouTuber. They, they were giving teller terrible advice talking about not niching, how niching will kill your brand and... But, okay, Just, here's my question. Does that, I don't care what they're saying. Does it feel right to you? From what you've seen, when you look at the top selling shops on Etsy and you look at the ones who are actually successful and, and you look at my students who are successful, we've got a whole playlist of interviews. Do your own research. Are you seeing success making everything? Are you? Because if you're not, maybe what that person's saying isn't the best strategy mm -hmm. you know i don't care if a lot of the times it's like coaches who are really pretty and you know they've, mm -hmm. they've got a really nice camera and they do remember their... anybody can get good at doing their makeup and anybody can buy a nice camera anybody can get good at editing videos and making content for tiktok and copying how everybody else does their videos for tiktok is a pretty easy thing to do that's why there's a million and one people do, do the exact same crap right but and most of those people aren't very good at what they do so but you've got to decide for yourself if the strategy is right. You know, you've got to decide for yourself if what they're saying, you know, does are the majority of their audience successful following their advice? Or does their audience consist of a bunch of people who are just chasing money and they're none, nobody's successful? That one. It's a lot of that. A lot of that right now. But let's move on to do Yeah, it. let's do it. I've been talking about that for an hour. Uh, I sell coloring pages slash coloring books. How can I compete with these people who make 
who use AI and flood the market. I love what I do and I take pride in each drawing, but how do I compete with AI? What you just said, I love what I do and I take pride in each drawing. You're not competing with AI. At the end of the day, it's pretty recognizable when a product is AI made. Well, take, separate that part. I love what I do and I take pride in each drawing. I want you to communicate that as a seller because an AI artist, they can't communicate that message through your branding, through your social media, through your product photos, through that banner at the top of your page, through your about section, <clears throat> you have to convey that exact thing. And everything that you do needs to be focused around, I am passionate about what I do and I, and I love drawing. That's what you need to focus in on and you need to focus on telling people that and showing people that. You don't even have to say, you know, never done by AI. You don't need to say that. Show them how you do do it. <laughs> do do. Do do. <laughs> <laughs> Late to the live. I'm trying to show my fiance that we're doing great. Being a three month old digital shop, we've done over 400 sales and she thinks we're failing. Any no. advice on how to support her? Success is a mindset that never changes, whether it's business in the hundreds of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Success is a mindset. There are people that make millions of dollars that I would say who are not successful. There are people that make hundreds of dollars a month who I would say are successful. It's it's success is a mindset. You set the the there is no like glass ceiling that you hit that you shatter through and you're like, oh, cool. Now I'm successful. Like who it's up to you to set where the bar of success is. And you're going to have to celebrate the small six. You're three months old. The 400 sales. That's insane. What's the what's the daily average for that? Like, That's in, that, those numbers are insane. What what influences in her life or his his her life that is ma making this individual feel like that's not good enough? Yeah, I mean you're talking an average of what five six sales a day. Most people don't make five to six sales in their first three months at all. Yeah, let alone four hundred. So I would I wouldn't question your success there. Yeah, for real. I mean, what is there an influence? Is there like a YouTuber or another shop that they're comparing themselves to? And if so, like you can't compare your start to somebody else's middle, you know, that, that those sales numbers are unheard of. That is insane. Keep carrying on what you're doing. Someone said, I'm sorry, but whoever's making millions is a success. No, I mean, we've actually seen people in the coaching industry who were making millions at one point who are literally making nothing now self-sabotage is a terrifying thing it's a very real thing and you got to understand that making like millions a, a year uh, i mean if you have 30 40 50 employees that millions of year is still only like 30 40 thousand dollars a year in your pocket it's not that much money i'm referring to like as a business in general sorry it's a it's a big perspective thing not like as an individual if you're making millions a year as an individual and you're not having to pay that money out clearly like you're doing probably doing something right <clears throat> Uh, I have a bunch of emails from customer opt-ins, but nervous about creating emails. Is this something better done by a freelancer? No, it's something better done by you, um, you know, spending the time learning how to do it. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck forever and ever and ever paying someone to do it for you. Learn the the voice of your audience and don't be afraid to mess up. You know, nobody's going to read one of your emails and be like, ugh, and unsubscribe, like just get in the habit of doing it because it gets easier the more you learn your brand voice. Um, I, I say the same thing about being on camera. There's no book you can read to get better at it. You just have to do it. And after a while, you'll, you know, it, it's nothing. Um, but really just, just start doing it. And you can do a little bit of research into it. You could use chat GPT to kind of help you out. If you're nervous about, you know, maybe you have you have something you want to say, but you're just not sure if you've articulated it right. Um, I am fully in support of using things like chat GPT when you have a great idea, but you're just not able to voice it well. Not all of us are great writers, you know. Um, yeah. So that's where I would start. It's uh, you can get into all the what ifs, of course, but generally a business making a million is a general success. If your business isn't sustainable, it doesn't matter how much money you're making. It's not successful. That's that's kind of all there is to it. Anyway, I'm not going to argue with anybody anyway. Let's see. Somebody had said that they were uh, thinking about hiring a graphic. I don't know where the comment is. I've probably lost in this sea of, of questions here. They said they were thinking about hiring a, a digital designer, but they're worried about them stealing their designs. 
Yeah, you can make um, contracts. Well, I mean, if you're hiring somebody to work in your Etsy shop, you're talking about somebody who's going to have to see your customer's PII. You should probably be putting them on a non-disclosure agreement anyway. And within a non-disclosure agreement, you can put a non-competition clause, which will literally legally bind them to not be able to compete with you within your industry for a set amount of time. You but can do three graphic months. Graphic designer, you wouldn't need to give them access to your if Etsy it's a shop. If it's a digital shop. Well, if, I mean, unless they're uploading them for you. I right mean, now. realistically, either way, you can still stick them on it yeah. if they're working with you and you can put a non-competition clause, which you can lock them down for like up to five years, five years, 10 years. I think I think five years is in the max, which where they would not be able to compete with you within your industry anywhere online within that time period without being suable. So yeah. there's ways around those things. Talk to talk to a legal professional. I mean, if you're really worried about something like that and you really want to do that, talk to a legal professional. That's. Uh. I need to get back down to the bottom because that's where all the questions are. I'm going to see if there's anything super important through here. People were really talking. They were a lot of love. Really? Mm-hmm. They like me? They like me? Do they like me? <laughs> I do get nervous when I... Because, you know, you guys are cool, but, like, there's always mm -hmm. replay people that... Thankfully, I have Michelle do a lot of my YouTube comments now so that I'm not having to see, like... The dummies because man i tell you what every once in a while we get some comments that are just weird true real weird how do you recommend someone make time to make great content while working about 45 hours a week full time i just use e-rank to auto post my mock-ups for now until i have time to make good reels so you you're optimizing the time that you have is all i can really tell you to do we, we are all born with 24 hours in our day so yeah. what you have to do is I, I would recommend getting yourself a, a planner. We like the, the legend planners. Um, or get on Etsy and order one from somebody that you like. That's... Right. Write down the things that you know you have to do. Those are, you know, you, you can't not go to work, right? You have to, you have to go to work. But then look at the gaps in that time. Make sure that you give yourself time to be a person. You got to have a have a shower. Yeah, don't burn yourself out. You got to have time to take a poop. You got to have, you've got to have time to go to sleep. Hey, but all of that time can be optimized. If you got social media posts and you had a little bit too much fiber the day before. That's what I toilet's do. Toilet's the best time to market. That's what I do. <laughs> I mean, really, you're going to have to, if you're working 45 hours a week, yeah, I mean, we're talking about, you're going to have time, have to have time for breakfast, lunch, dinner, doing dishes, doing laundry and everything else in between. You're going to have to optimize that. Those little five minutes here and there that you spend scrolling through Facebook, you're just going to have to dedicate those to doing something different. And I'm not one that usually says to give up on things. I don't believe that. But if it becomes to a point where it's too stressful, it might be time to step back and wait until your job is a little bit more stable before you commit a lot of time into something like an Etsy shop. Right. It really just depends on what your personal life looks like outside of work and how much time you have to commit. And do you have like a big stretch of days off? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you've got a big stretch of days off, like that's when you bust butt. Business like, business does require some kind of sacrifice. And that sacrifice is different for everybody. Some, some people, it's sacrificing your free time. Sometimes it's getting rid of toxic friends and family. Sometimes it's, it, I mean, it can be any number of things, but business requires sacrifice. And if you do want to succeed in it and you're working that much, you're either going to probably have to sacrifice some of your fun time and hopefully not destroy your mental health in the process, or you're going to have to wait until your job is a little more stable and you can work fewer hours and you can commit more time to what you're doing. I mean, that just for the sake of being honest. Right. We 45 hours a week is a lot of time. Right. Weekends are going to be your best friend or whenever mm -hmm. your days, your days off are. That's that's the time when you need to say, OK, time for my second job. Um, and, you know, I, I completely understand if like that's too much, because I tell you what, I don't think that I could do what I do if I did that. I don't think that I could. I, I don't think I could also run a business if I work that much. I really don't. Um, I'm I'm very lucky to have not worked a day job since I was 19. Um, so for those of you who are able to juggle both, like just know that you do more than I think I could ever do. I did the boot camp, posted an engagement reel on one of my Insta profiles using the yes no sticker, but it doesn't seem to do anything. What step have I missed? Um, you mean the I mean try tapping it yourself. If you vote yourself, if you hit like the yes or the no, then it's already going to be posted. Um, can you post 
your question in the boot camp group. I'm not going to be there today because Mark and I are actually leaving for an anniversary trip right mm -hmm. after we're I'm done so with us. But all the other coaches are in there. So any boot camp related questions, feel free to post those um, in the group. That's a visual question and I would have to see it, unfortunately. My sacrifice is my DoorDash budget. It pains me, but it's for the better and I'm cooking more. Dude, don't even. You want to tell them how much we spent last year on DoorDash? No, it's embarrassing. Uh, side question. <laughs> Will you do licensing for the fourth wing? Got denied. So, Teehee. Rebecca Yaros uh, cut off licensing in July, but we had applied in June. And um, we tried, we said, you know, well, we, we did apply before it was cut off. You know, can you reconsider and her assistant said, well, can you send us some previews? And, you know, we're like, no, we literally just started the shop and we wanted to ask your permission first before we started de developing the products. And they're keeping us in consideration, but it doesn't look like they're licensing right now. So no. kind of bummed. So Pedialyte is the best hangover cure for long festival. <laughs> I like liquid IV. It tastes a little better. It doesn't quite have that weird thickness thickness Pedialyte has that is like have you ever had thick water before it's like thick water and i don't want it it is kind of thick it's like the glucose uh when you get your glucose mm -hmm. test when you're pregnant amber are you still here you just had your glucose test didn't you Ugh. Ugh. it's like orange syrup how can i figure out who my ideal target audience is uh that, that's the question isn't it that's a good question um you need to okay so you technically mm. you should decide on your target audience before you make the product. Um, but look at what your product is and try to narrow down who is it for? Who are you making it for? Who is your ideal customer for this type of item? If you've been selling it for a while and you already have some sales, start looking at the Etsy profiles of the people who have purchased what you're selling. If you've never made any sales, well, you need to decide for yourself if maybe your target audience is a little too broad. Moms, that ain't a target audience. Moms of children ages birth to, you know, three. Sure, that, that could be a target audience. Eco-friendly moms with children ages birth to three. Now that's a target niche, you know. And, and if that was my niche, eco-friendly moms ages, you know, birth to three, I would make cloth diapers for her. I would make some cool, um, I don't know, some type of cool little needle felted like mobile for above the the crib that I've made out of some organic cotton or something. You know, I would find a way to fill her needs um, and making sure that the products that I create align with her morals and values. So you really just need to work on who your products are for and then try to narrow that down. <laughs> Starla's telling me I'm not a snowflake. I'm just teasing. This is a great live stream. You're only as strong as you allow yourself to be. That's kind of how it works, unfortunately. Is anyone else struggling to post social media updates using the Etsy app or website? They keep sending me suggestions to use ads. All I want to do is send my customers updates on current listings. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, is it common for a customer not to respond back after you've sent them an yep. email after a sale oh yeah I, I would say the majority won't respond yep do you reply to <laughs> emails for, or messages um or you're not emailing them right i'm assuming they meant message on etsy yeah don't yeah, e don't email them unless they give you explicit permission to do so yeah but if you're messaging them and you're using the swipe files most of them won't um doesn't mean that they're not reading them though so do, 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 do. Do, do, do. A lot of people like your nails. Ah, they're fake. <laughs> they're press-ons. I can't. I can't spend a bunch of money on nails. They're just gonna get broken off in a couple hours. <laughs> Gilligan said, "I hate being on camera because of my tooth mishap, but a quote to fix it this week. I'm still trying, though. I look stupid. Oh no! I would make it. I would make a thing out of it. Do it. Do a tooth hurdy joke. Tooth hurdy. <laughs> tooth hurdy. Uh huh. Uh. Yes, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different outcomes is the definition of insanity. I knew it was, I think I got it pretty darn close, yeah, right? I'm pretty sure that was the guy from the Far Cry game that said that. No, I don't think so. Uh, do, 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 do. Christina Nicole, pick 
and stick. Stop trying to do all the things. When you're trying to do all of the things, you're doing none of them well. Find a few things that are working and get consistent with them. Exactly. If you try to appeal to everybody, you're going to appeal to nobody. The, the only businesses that do good with that business model are Walmart and Amazon. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think that, the, that Walmart does a very good job of it because Walmart is associated with the grossest, you know, stuff. You guys follow that People of Walmart page? Oh, my oh, God. That's my favorite. Uh, does anyone have tips for learning from your competition without comparing yourself to them in a negative way? So that's all about mindset, and that is all very personal development. You just have yeah. to remember that as you're learning from them, you are not them, and you don't know what their lives as people look like. Don't just look at their brand. Remember, there's a human being behind their brand as well. You cannot compare yourself to that human being. You're two different people with two different lives, two different sets of hours. Maybe maybe you have a bunch of kids and they have none. Well, yeah, it stands to reason. They're going to have a lot more time on their hands to dedicate. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have a good answer aside from remembering that every human being is going to be completely different and and what they're capable of and what and, and even like their mental health is going to be different you know i feel like i'm a pretty darn resilient person when it comes to my mental health and i've finally hit my breaking point so i'm taking a freaking break <laughs> How long should I try doing the same thing before I decide it's not working? I hear a lot of advice that you just need to be persistent, that results take time and not to give up too soon. Um, I think it depends on what it is that you're experimenting with. Is it the type of product that you're selling? Well, if it's the type of product that you're selling, I think that first you need to think about all the things that make a product successful rather than saying nobody likes this product. Well, is your SEO strategy good? Are your photos good? Does your pricing align with your industry? Uh does do you have a social media following uh are you actually you know spending time on that social media following are you making sure that the way that you're actually advertising those products is working are you analyzing your results there are your results working if not what can you do to make your social media more appealing there are a lot of different factors so it's really a process of elimination as for a a, a amount of time i dare say if you've been doing something for six months and you're not seeing any you know, waves at all might be time to pivot your strategy a little bit. If it's social media specifically, and it's how you're, you know, how you're offering your products and how you're marketing your products, I dare say that three months is a pretty good amount of time. Though, seasonality affects that as well. During the summer, things are pretty slow. So, you know, making sure that you're also looking at the time of year. I made a design 100%, yet Etsy keeps deactivating it, saying it's a fake design. I triple check every word for trademarks, uh, and if it's against their policy and it's not, is there any way past this? It's likely not a human. <clears throat> it is their automated system. This has been an ongoing issue uh, with a lot of different sellers. The only thing that you can do is continue reaching out to support, unfortunately. I know that that sucks, but there's no way around Etsy when Etsy does things. You have to go through their support, and it's a pain in the butt. Um, it's why we did our Keep Etsy Human initiative, because we are very unhappy with the way that Etsy's been handling a lot of things. And I mean, if anybody has any s solutions they can recommend to Etsy, feel free to shoot them their way. I'm sure they'd be they'd be happy with it. Unfortunately, most of the ways that Etsy could improve their platform would be removing saturation from shops that do copyright things and unfortunately that would probably backfire in a bad way now while before you move on um since we've got 392 of you here i did want to shout out super duper quick um christina nicole we've had her on my channel before you can watch a really great episode of the friday bean where she's she, awesome she diagnosed um several different um issues that people have with their product photos she contributed to this year's alpha holiday boot camp all of my students get her product photography essentials workshop for free. She is doing a five-day challenge coming up starting Monday. You can re-watch the videos, though. It's, you know, it's not like you have to be there at a specific time. Um, but she's doing a five-day challenge. It's, it's, it's basically a little mini course for just $37, which is 
insane, um, especially because the value there is phenomenal. We had a ton of people take it the last time she offered it in the spring. Um, I took it and used tons of those strategies to take my flat lay photos of our stickers that we just listed in our new shop. Um, so I've personally taken, I think that there's a couple parts during the end that I didn't get to, but just what I learned from the beginning, it helped me so much. Please consider that or checking that out. If you feel like you need the extra help, um, if you took the boot camp and you want a little bit more, if you just don't know where to even start with your lighting, when it comes to product photos, lighting is the most important thing though. So consider checking that out if you want to learn more about it. There is a link down below in the video description. Um, for the price, it's, it is so affordable for, for what you get. And she's going to be doing a daily live sessions in the Facebook group that you get when you join that. So you can hang out with her, ask questions, um, and it should be a lot of fun. So check that out down below. Okay, I'm good. Uh, if I want to start a new shop, should I wait till after Q4 so I'm not stuck with too few listings to support the holiday shoppers? That's Don't worry about trying to support the holiday shoppers. That's Those are... While I understand what you're saying, one is not how one does not weigh on the other, right? Um, you're not starting a shop in hopes that you're not going to upset holiday shoppers. Start your shop. If if you're ready to start it, start it. Get your stuff listed. If it's not listed, it can't sell. Um, nobody's going to look at your shop and say, oh, there's nothing here. I'm never going to come back here. You know, you're not making your shop like how am I trying to say this you're not leaving a stain you know in the eyes of people who do visit you during the holidays you're not making you know you're not impacting the way that your shop looks for the long term just just start like no no paralysis by over analysis just start get it get your stuff listed do what you can you can totally be under construction throughout the holiday season Let's see. What is a decent range for profit margin that will allow you to put on a sale, but ha have a price so high that to stop potential sales? Sales. That's. It, it is entirely dependent yeah. on the industry that you're in. Unfortunately, we can't a answer that for you. Um, check out in the E Rank keyword tool. Uh, it's now broken down into little tabs <clears throat> when you scroll down. Um, but we do have a tab where you're able to see common price points in your industry. I recommend finding wherever the top is. Find who's charging the most. Price in the top 10%. That's that's always been my advice. Price in the top 10% of your industry. Have you noticed any progress with Etsy cracking down on handmade sellers being actual handmade sellers after the Keep Etsy human movement? You know, we've tried to stay humble with that because we can't obviously directly relate anything that we've done to any changes that they've made. However, they did make pretty significant changes less than a week after we did the initiative and we're still continuing to see more things popping up. Well, they, they made, they, so a week after or not, it wasn't even a week. It was six days. Yeah. They put a thing in your listing page, basically saying to make sure that your product follows their marketplace standards and, you know, follows their Etsy's rules. Um, that was like the band aid that we saw right after keep Etsy human. And then I just made a video. There's like a video on my channel called like Etsy holiday policy update or something. Go watch that. I don't want to say that those changes are what we did because, again, that would be, like, really yeah, fat-headed of me. Yeah, it wouldn't be very humble. Right. However, a lot of the things that we asked for, they say that they're doing. Now, I, I also, like, countered a lot of those in the video. Like, I'm not just praising Etsy. I think that they still have a long way to go. No, and I uh, to be completely honest with you, I think they're little like money initiatives at like giving you a percentage off. I think, I think that that's kind of a workaround for them actually changing an issue. I, uh, it's a good initiative. However, I think it's a, I think it's a bandaid on a gunshot wound, but anyway. Share, yeah. Like share and save, which is great. I love share and save. That's awesome. There's literally no negative. Uh... Yeah. It's not bad in and of itself. It's a great thing. However, it should be something that is in addition to fixing all of the issues that they already have, not a, uh, something else like here make this happy i'm gonna punch you in the face but i'll give you a biscuit afterwards it, like it's... it it does feel like we got loud and now they're giving us cookies um yeah. to, to shut us up for a while but you but know what we really need is a surgeon 
<laughs> yeah, we need we need some change. Yeah, big time. But check out that video. It just says like Etsy holiday policy update on it or something. Um, but it could be entirely coincidental, but the fact that it happened literally less than it was started less than a week after. Yeah, and then it was and then it was like a month later they did the big update. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I giggled at doo doo too. Uh, I Ashley. love it. Up above. Uh, I have a business Facebook page, but the quote unquote followers are coming through like friends request. Most of them seem like bots or salespeople. Should I accept all requests to grow? Ashley, that doesn't sound like a business page. Yeah, if they're sending friends requests, that, that sounds like it's a group. Or a personal page. Or a personal page, not a business page. Are you sure you have a business page? Because that's not how following works for a business page. That might be something you want to post in the Handmade Alpha Facebook community. The link is down below in the video description, but that doesn't sound right. That's not how following a page works. I mean, occasionally you will get a bunch of scammy people. I had somebody with like, dear God, they had like 60 Facebook pages. And and they had went and liked my page with like all 60 of their pages. And it was some scammy looking page. And I just went through and blocked every single one of those accounts. Can you tell me why the drop shippers don't just stick to eBay and Amazon? Because Etsy is a more popular platform at the moment. I'm not more popular. It's but... more popular in the handmade side right. of things. And <sighs> to be completely honest and to a lot of people aren't smart. And I think we can all agree with that. <laughs> I think I think the problem is that. I don't want to relate it to intelligence. It's not an intelligence thing. I think it is a naive thing. I think a lot of people are naive and they put too much trust in people on Etsy, which I, you know, honestly, I wish that we could. You could. I really do. But I think people go to Etsy and they think that no matter what, what they're getting is a handmade product. And because of that, a lot of people move to Etsy and they unfortunately got successful or get successful taking advantage of people and uh, i am a lot more aggressive about my opinions about that kind of stuff on etsy and I'll, I'll keep them to myself but it's people getting taken advantage of that's at the end of the day that's what it is people know that they can come to etsy and they can take advantage of people who don't know better yeah um it's, it's not that it's allowed, it's that Etsy has to build a system that's able to identify it and they're working on it, but the system isn't working and it's also yeah. targeting people any, who are handmade. Any quick responses by Etsy are not going to make people happy. Realistically, if Etsy wanted to nail it down, they would probably get rid of POD entirely and they would probably get rid of shops that sell resources for other shops. Yeah, I, I, I think, in my opinion, the best thing that Etsy could do would be to split their website into different portions. If you sell craft supplies, Etsy could make a website specifically for supplies then there you go the jewelry market is no longer fully saturated and you have a website where people can go str strictly to sell their supplies there's a lot of people especially in the jewelry industry that sell craft supplies as an individual piece of jewelry they charge fifty dollars for a single pendant that they bought a hundred of on ebay for five dollars if we could move those people to a different platform that would be great if we could move clothing entirely to another platform where pod sellers could entirely compete with themselves and people that make clothing by hand and actually like do everything themselves could be their own individual handmade thing but that's not possible etsy isn't going to do something like that so we have to give them the time and the benefit of the doubt that they're doing research in order to help people who work harder be more successful and that's not an easy i don't have an answer to that and I'm not a specialist at that. And we're talking about a company that makes millions and millions and millions of dollars a year. And they're having trouble coming up with an answer for that. Amazon doesn't have an answer for that. It's a question that everyone is trying to answer. How can we make everybody happy and everybody successful so we make the most money? And if they can't come up with it, then probably none of us can either. It's a yeah. matter. It's a matter of time. Um, and P Tina had said POD is different than drop shipping, though. POD is dr different than drop shipping as well. And to be honest with you, I think for the drop shippers, if there was a way to 100% guarantee that they were only going to kick drop shippers off the platform, I would be 100% happy with kicking drop shippers entirely off of Etsy. And I know there's probably a few of you drop shippers here. I don't hold any regard for it at all. Etsy's not the platform for that. If you want to do that, go to eBay, go to Amazon, go and to one of those platforms. I don't care if your feelings are hurt. I don't. It's not what it's Etsy is a human 
love and care platform to sell things that you are passionate about. Yeah. That's it. And I also, you know, POD sellers who generate, you know, 6,000 AI designs and and shove them on t-shirts, you know, there's a difference between, and I still think that, you know, some AI when done creatively is also okay. Has its place. Everything has, has its place. But if your objective is to saturate and to make as much as possible, um, I think that that is, you, you clearly don't care about the individual things that you're making or the people that you're trying to appeal to. Yep. There's no thought behind it, you know? Mm-hmm. Should I do a giveaway on social media to drive traffic and grow my email list? You can. Yeah, yeah I mean, Why you're not? you're in the rave industry, so definitely, I, I, I would say mm-hmm. join some of the, um, even if you can't personally go to some of the big festivals, join the groups associated social with them. Social media is where you're going to thrive for yeah. the rave community. Join, join some of the, the smaller groups, like, You'll probably see me if you go into the the Lost, Lost the Lost Lands fam page. I'm in there commenting every once in a while. Join those little pages. Don't spam. Be a part of be a part of the of the industry or the the EDM industry is specifically is one of like loving and caring for each other. She knows. So be a part of that. Yeah. Just contribute. Right. Make it if you're doing a giveaway, make sure that your position of your giveaway is to, you know, I want to spread joy by hosting this giveaway and I want to give somebody this really cool thing that I've made, which you make cool things. So that's should yeah, be easy enough. Exactly. But we are at the 130 mark. Um, you are the 130 mark. I am the 130 mark. We are a minute and a half. But hold on. But oh. Adelaide said she wasn't trying to argue with me. Not oh. sure why I jumped to that. A lot of people have goals for their business, many making that the first million or whatever a success. Separate a success from being successful. Those are two totally different things. Obviously, making a million dollars is extremely, that's a good thing. What I'm saying, and, and this is my, everybody has their own opinion on success, and that's why I say that, you know, success is a, is a mindset. Sustainability in my opinion, is success. And that doesn't mean sustainability as in like, it's enough for you to not have a job. I mean, sustainability as in the business sustains it for itself. It can buy its own resources. It can stay afloat without outside help. That to me is success. But anyway. Right. Like there's a reason that most uh, lottery winners go bankrupt within the first, what, year? I think three years. Something like that, yeah. Um, Sustainability is key in my eyes making having a million dollars in your bank account suddenly is not the same as being able to perpetuate success. Yes. You want to perpetuate money, not just acquire it. If you acquire yes. it, that's great. But if you cannot perpetuate it, then you will run out of it. Right. So, and again, your opinion can be different than mine. I'm not upset in any way, shape or form. Yeah, he didn't. I, I'm I, just saying I didn't want to continue the conversation about something because it wasn't relevant to the topics at hand. Right. We have to we have to stop talking about yeah, things yeah, eventually. That's, that's it. I don't want you to think that I was like attacking or anything like that. I don't I could care less. But I know this was kind of like a somber live stream a little bit, I guess. But I hope that excuse me, I hope you guys were able to take something positive from it. Um, yeah, guys, like, just focus on your lane and do your research and, and take good notes. And remember that this is supposed to be fun. Like, don't forget that. Don't lose sight of that. Yes, please. If you lose sight of the the fact that this is supposed to be really fun and you're supposed to enjoy it, I mean, then ultimately, why are you even doing it? Like, you, you started this because you like to do it, right? I hope so. so. Oh, yeah, I definitely hope so. Um... With that being said, be sure to check out Christina Nicole's super awesome program. Link down below. Like, just she's freaking awesome. Just, just take a peek at it. Just look at it. See if it see if it looks interesting to you. Um, because it, it helped so many of our alphas the last time she offered it, and it's so freaking cheap. Thirty seven dollars mm-hmm. is nothing compared to what you get. So take a peek at it. Decide if it's right for you. Um, and yeah, Handmade Alpha Academy. Our Etsy course will be opening on December first through mm-hmm. the tenth. If you're interested in that, I always try to give lots of heads up. That way you guys have time to, you know, save for it. If it's something that you're wanting to take, there is a link for that down below. Um, What are you grabbing? Oh, you should put Christina's link in there too. Yeah, I should. Do you have that? That's ours. You'll have to get it out of the YouTube. Yeah, good luck with that. (laughs) Not you. (laughs) We should have pulled it up on screen I'm ahead sorry. of time. I'm watching it pull. No, no, no. I'm just gonna do it the hard way. That one. And then she put. Uh, no. 
Shut up video. That's us talking. And then more. And then that. Just click the link so it opens all the way. There you go. And then click up there. Mm -hmm. And then get that. And then and then that's not that's, that's Facebook. That's Facebook. And then click over there. Use to see that. Nope, that's the wrong chat. Yeah. And, then there's that. and there's look at there. it. There. there you go. And yeah, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. We We're gonna go you. spend the weekend in the in the woods being quiet. He's gonna finish reading Crescent City. You're uh, gonna go eat meat and cheese. I'm gonna finish uh, Assassin's Blade. Maybe. I bought a lot of wine. I'm gonna try. It. We're gonna play Battleship. He bought Battleship. Yeah, we're gonna play Battleship, yo. And we've got pool and and Harry Potter Scrabble. And I'm gonna teach her how to play ping pong. I mean, I know how to. I get the basic. You hit a ball. And... Yeah, you hit a ball across the table. That's kind of it. That's all there is. That's the entire sport of ping pong summed up into a few words. You hit a ball across the table with a wood paddle. Sure. Anyway. Well, we love you guys. We will see you next Tuesday for her next video next Thursday. Do you want to tell them what the video is on Tuesday? I don't even know. The one, the long one that we recorded together. I bought 400 and like 30 something dollars, I think, worth of Printify samples of like a ton of different products. And, and I reviewed them. Yeah, we went, we. we went through them and reviewed all the product samples and checked them out. And they all sucked. No, I'm just kidding. They were amazing. So <laughs> yeah, that, and the video is really long, but it's really funny. So consider checking that out. We love you day. guys. And then E Rank live stream next Thursday at three on the E Rank channel. You can just YouTube E Rank. And then next Friday here for another okay live stream. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> I need more coffee. Uh, me too. I want some coffee, some